Okay, a pleasant good evening everyone. Welcome to our first Sunday evening service of this year. A pleasant, a pleasant welcome as well to our visitors. Welcome along flight 2022. And I also must say happy new year to you all. Um, before we go any further, um, Sister Kerry, thank you for reading that scripture as well. God's love letter to us. But let's join me at God's throne as we seek his face and as I rely solely on him to bring me through this message. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the being a wonderful, amazing God. We thank you for the testimonies who testify of your work in the lives of us individually. Thank you for the whole idea of um Brother Julian share about patience. It's um a virtue. Lord, it's one of those things that is oftentimes not easily easily learned. So Lord I pray that you may fill our hearts this year with patience. And then Lord I ask for you to empower me empower me with thy spirit because Lord I truly believe that your Holy Spirit resides inside of me, not to just reside but for me to rely upon him so lord i rely upon him right now and ask that you may grant me wisdom give me clarity in thought clarity in speech and may your word the christ words be resonate deeply within our hearts and may this message cement deep down and it will be an anchor for our soul this year bless us bless your word breathe upon it and breathe upon everyone now in Jesus' name, Amen. At the start of every year, there is always a mix of emotion given the possibilities of new challenges which breeds fears, and uncertainties and many other of that sort. In other words, if we should sit down to anticipate in our own strength every obstacle that may come our way, it will probably freeze or clip the hopes of this year likely being one of the best. I think many people believe that God somehow wants us to figure out this year all by ourselves, which is far from the truth. Every child of God's responsibility is to rest in the fact that God is already at the end of 2022. Not only is he at the end, but at the start and at the middle. Isaiah 46 and verse 10 states, Declaring the end from the beginning, and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Our Heavenly Father is lying unto a loving coach, who is willing to hold our hands, willing to prepare us, and is also willing to bring us to the finishing line, the end of 2022. You see, because God is a sovereign and care and cares about each and every one of his children, we shouldn't therefore see this year as an obstacle, but more so as, as ways in which God can manifest himself in our various circumstances. And so I want to start this message by asking, why are you worrying? worrying? Why are you so fearful? Why are you so cast down? But more so importantly, what are your concerns? This evening I've entitled this sermon message Facing 2022 Knowing Your Heavenly Father Cares Facing 2022 Knowing Your Heavenly Father Cares First Peter 5 and verse 7 says Casting all your cares upon him For he cared for you One of the simplest exhortations Yet most profound yet, yet still we forget it Giving God my cares means to surrender or hand over or to say from our heart, Lord, take full control of my situation. The Greek word for cares speaks to the fact, speak to that which is our own interest or to that which is our, to that which concerns us. But before I start preaching, I want to debunk one of the greatest disapproving thoughts we oftentimes have in our hearts. Trials and storms coming into our life isn't an indication that God doesn't care. I want to repeat that. Trials and storms coming into our lives isn't an indication that God doesn't care. In fact, it is a total opposite of our Heavenly Father. God takes thoughts into every detail of our lives. 
He knows what our schedule is like from day to day. He knows what those bills are like. And he even knows what is lingering on our thoughts, which cause us so much sleepless nights. When I think of people who go through difficulties and quickly dismisses that God cares, it's sad because he is there and is willing to help us through. I want to say this once more. 2022, God still cares. And this brings me to my first point, our Heavenly Father caring exhortation. I think our Heavenly Father best show his care by his soft and tenderly words he echoes to us. In the scriptures, he often, oftentimes say, do not be fearful. Why are you cast down? Why are you so fearful? I think this encouragement is God saying to us, I got this under control. In other words, go to bed, get some rest, or even be at peace with yourself. In Jamaican terms, we oftentimes say, don't worry yourself, man. But when I look at Matthew 6 and verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Now I nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? When we read these writings of God's heart, I believe he wants us to take them personally. I think we tend to get too acquainted with the message, until we lose the value of what is being said. I believe every one of God's writings should be cherished. After all, these thoughts are God's and God's encouragement to us. Too often we, we, too often we forget that God has a word for us fitting for every situation of our lives. Let's look at what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying and whose message he was bringing. He was saying and preaching, he was teaching and preaching rather on a mount, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. But let's look back, let's look deeply whose message it was. Let's look back to Matthew 6 verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What I want us to realize is that these words are coming from God the Father himself. Though Jesus Christ was the Son of God was speaking, he was pointing back to the fact that we have a loving Father in heaven. Now, now that we have established such, such truth, let's look back at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat? and the body than raiment, I want, us, I want us to focus on these few words. These words are the life of this passage. It is what set the stage for this passage. That phrase in verse 25, take no thought. It comes up twice in this passage. Let's look at verse 31. It says, take no thought. In the Greek language, the phrase means, do not be anxious. This is the first message our Father in heaven are for all of us today. In, in February, in March, in, in April, in May, in June, in July, in August, in September, in October, in November, in December. The message is still, do not be anxious. But let's look at why people get anxious and fearful. Verse 25 kind of give us that. What shall he, what he shall eat, or what he shall drink, nor yet for your body, or what he shall put on? Is not life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Number one, Jesus is saying we get anxious over our daily provisions, which is food. Number two, we get anxious over our shelter, which is clothing. These are the exact reason we get so anxious in life, including many others. But I want to, I want to say this to you. Anything that is sent on the security of the future brings anxiety. And I want to say that. Anything that is sent on the security of the future brings anxiety. Any, any hopes of us want to, to, to control the outcome of things will cause us anxiety. You see, some people live in the state of fear or in the state of panic over things they have no control. When we become anxious, anxious it is saying we don't trust our sovereign Father in heaven. In other words, it is a major distrust in God to be in a state of anxiety, fear and worry. According to studies, the phrase fear not comes up over 365 times in the Bible. To be fearful is to be in a state of unbelief, which is sin. Why would it be sin? I believe because it causes us to be in a state of self-dependency than truly relying on God. And so the exhortation that Christ gave us, do not be anxious. It is the same exhortation that Apostle Paul later gave us. But I want you to write this down, perhaps which may help you. 
The power to defeat the plague of anxious thoughts is not in us, but in the word of God. I want to repeat that thought. The power to defeat the plague of anxious thoughts is not in us, but in the word of God. Before we look at what the Apostle Paul said, let's ponder the question of Jesus in verse 25. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? What the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to us is, Our concerns about material possession and the lack of them is of no major concern to our Heavenly Father to take good care of us. If we should look, if we should look on how God provides our past needs, then it should be a testimony of God's faithfulness to take good care of us. We think about how God would have just said, Take no thought. Do not be anxious. Now, let's look at, look at the word of Apostle Paul. After all, God used him to pen these exact words. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, Paul says here, Be careful for nothing, but, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. In other words, Paul is saying, Be anxious for nothing. Then he says, But in everything, in other words, in every manner of life, these three elements will cure and silent the anxious art. The anxious art. Number one, prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Of a truth, if we see God as the source of all things, then our troublesome soul will find rest. The, rate, the way to free yourself from anxiety is to be prayerful about everything. That's what God is recommending. You see, anxiety comes from trying to figure out life without first seeking God. And I want us to get that. Anxiety comes from trying to fur sorry. Anxiety comes from trying to figure out life without first seeking God. That's a thought came to me when I was preparing. But look what happened when we see God. Verse 7 says here, Paul, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Now I want to give you a little background here as Paul is speaking. In the city of Philippi, the people would have normally seen soldiers guarding the town at every corner. In other words, this city was heavily guarded. And so the phrase in verse 7, shall keep, is a military term. The soldiers would normally cover the city, trying to keep the city in, 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 in garrison. So when, when Paul is talking about shall keep, he's, he's speaking about a garrison or to hold tightly. In the midst of fear and worry, God is offering us a tranquility of peace. In other words, He gives us freedom while worry takes us into prison. To worry means to be a prisoner of our circumstances. So have you ever had to exchange something? Think about that thought. Have you ever had to exchange something? When we go to God in prayer about our cares, it goes like, my son and my daughter, give me this and take this. It is my peace. It is yours. Now take it. When we go to God in prayer, that's exactly what happens. It's an exchange. We give God our concerns and God gives us his peace. You say, Mr. Stewart, it's not that easy. My brothers and sisters, the only reason why we are anxious is because we fail to let things go into God's hands. And so I want to give you a perfect picture of peace versus anxiety. Let's look at this passage together. The answer to 2022. Exodus 14 verses 10 to 14. I'll give you a little time. Exodus 10 verse, verse sorry, Exodus 14 verses 10 to 14. I, I say it very slowly for you. Exodus 14 verses 10 to 14. Most get shot, right? Verse 10 here says here, when fear a June night. The children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there was no grave in Egypt, graves in Egypt, thou hast take us, us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore, hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone? That we may serve the Egyptians. And this is anxiety and fear. No? Anxiety, fear, worry, everything is coming out here. Look what they said in verse 12. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than we should die in the wilderness. That's fear. Fear gripping them. Because why? They saw 
saw in verse 10 fear a joint night with his with his army and fear is a natural response when you when you have nothing else to do and so this is the definition of an anxious group of people they are so fearful and timid about the current reality this is where fear meets our heavenly father by the way let's let's god sees their reality rather and says my people as i said earlier take no thought do not be anxious Verse 13 says now, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptian who you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, according to verse 14, and ye shall owe your peace. This is the exchange. God delivered them. First he said in verse 14, Fear ye not. And, the, and the, the phrase stand still it means to surrender the situation in other words they're in an open situation and, 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 and Moses just said stand still see the salvation of your Lord and verse 14 says the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace that's the same analogy Paul is saying here when we seek God God goes like take my peace give me your worry give me your cares in this very moment we are reminded what God can do he gave them peace plus deliverance. But what about the events leading up to it? If we should just rem remember who God is, then we will find peace. 2022, our Father isn't clueless in heaven of what may come our, come our way and my way this year. Secondly, I want us to recognize his sovereign care. This brings me to my, my second point. My second point, our Heavenly Father sovereign, sovereign care. C.S. Spurgeon, that popular preacher, he says here, Child of God, you cost the Lord too much for him to ever forget about you. When I was preparing, I remember reading that quote a long time ago, a long, long time, and that, 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 that this quote came back to mind. Child of God, you cost the Lord too much for him to ever forget about you. You see, nature itself speaks to the fact that our Heavenly Father do care about us. I think about think our Heavenly Father knows exactly when to send rain, when to withhold it. He knows when exactly to send out the sun or when to withhold it. He sees a bird and says he needs something to eat and provide for it. A cow the same thing, all animals the same thing. Everything that our Heavenly Father has created, he sustains it and provides for it. Psalm 47 and verse 9 says, He give it to the beast is food and to the young raven which cry. But think about the thought that the Lord Jesus Christ pulled on in verse 26. Matthew, we're going back to Matthew, Matthew 6, by the way. Verse 26. Behold the folds of the hair. In other words, take a look at the fold of the hair. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. I want you to think about the questions. Each of, each of these questions that the Lord Jesus Christ is asking is for us to take them very personally. Put our names beside them. It, say, it says here, Are he not much better than they? The birds which our Lord Jesus Christ is alluding to, one is saying they don't work, but they are well taken care of. It's a thought for all of us. There's nothing on our mind. Schedule are on our to-do list that God can take care of. You see, God in his infinite wisdom take good care of all his creation. How much better will he take good care of all his children? You see, too often, too often we think of ourselves too less than being children of God. I believe that whenever we are worrying, we are saying we are less than children of God. That's exactly what we are saying. The point Christ is trying to make is that if God can take care of these birds, what about you and I? Look at the question again. He's, he's asking us, are you, not, are you not much better than they? Think about that. If I should call each of you and each of you name here present, which time won't permit me? I could go down the list. Brother Flip, are you not much better than they? Yes. You don't need to answer, brother. <laughs> A rhetorical question God's put so much thought and care into all of us and his creation that's exactly what Jesus Christ is saying Psalm 47 Psalm 147 the same Psalm as I read earlier 
verses 4 and 5. Think about this verse. I want you to make it think, sink deeply in your heart. He, he tell it the number of the stars. He call it them all by their names. I want you to repeat that verse. Verse 4. He tell it the number of the stars. He call it them by names. All, call it, he call it them all by their names. You see, if God can create millions of millions of stars and give each of them, each and every one of them a name, how oh, will he forget to take good care of us this year? Think about that. Verse 5 says here in Psalm 147, Great is our Lord, and, and, and of great power, his understanding is infinite. We can't measure who God is. Not only does God knows, knows deeply his creation, he knows us intimately and deeply. Let's look at Matthew 10 verses 29 to 31. Let's, um, after that we go back to the main text. Matthew 10, 29 and 31. 29 says here, Are not two sparrows sold for a farling? In other words, for in those days they, they used denarius or something like that. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. In other words, if a bird should fall on the ground right now, dead. God in heaven know about it. That's what he's saying. Think about this verse. 30, verse 30. Matthew 10 verse 30. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. We hear that verse so much. I will forget about the, the, the details that God put into each and every one of his children. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. How can we forget this truth? This is to say God is interested in each and every one of us as an, as an individual. Every detail about our hair, God knows them. And gentlemen, even the bald spot. <laughs> verse 31 says here, Fear ye not, therefore... He are of more value than many sparrows. He said, God wants every one of us to take his word personally. The second question asks, is, this is a key question, I believe. It captured the emptiness of worry. Verse 27, Matthew 6, 27 now. Which of you, by taking thought, can add, can, can add one cubit? He's saying, one cubit, you know. Not 20, you know. He's saying, just think about the depth of what he's saying. If you should worry for one minute, it won't accomplish nothing within that one minute. Which of you, by taking thought, can add, can add one cubit unto his statue? The point Jesus is trying to make, well, he's not trying. Jesus always makes his point. A short person can never become taller by worrying. In other words, worrying about the future only dishonor God. Put another way. We can never worry ourselves into a longer life. You sit down there, thinking, 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 thinking. You can never change the reality of your circumstances. You make all the best to just give it to the Lord. You see, worry accomplish nothing. Just a nicer way of putting it. Worry accomplish one thing. Nothing. To worry is not only unnecessary, it's also pointless. I want to say that. To worry is not only unnecessary, it's pointless. I can't put the finest point here. I don't have a pen. The third question. For my sisters who often time forget to water their plants. More like you can identify with this. Ask how come... For, I want to repeat that. To my sisters who often time forget to water their plants. And ask how come this plant is still alive. The simple answer is it's God. Let's, let's, let's look at verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. When Jesus speaks about the raiment, he's speaking about clothes. What, in other words, why be anxious about clothing, which is mere shelter? Then he's saying here, take a look at the plants outside. One of my greatest thoughts of, of all time in my life is just to drive past a mountain. I like seeing the greens. It's just always bright up my day. Nobody go up there and water those plants, but we often time wonder how oh, a mountainside can be so beautiful. Right? And so the question should all of us ask, who do you think take good care of it? Oh Heavenly Father. Nobody go up there and water the mountain. Nobody go up there and, and try to plant a tree or stuff like that. God take good care of his creation. You see, no man can destroy God's creation before his time. I want to say that a message is coming up as it relates to that. 
The same is true about our, our own lives. Read Psalm 104 when you get a chance. It's about God and his creation. Such a beautiful psalm. But I'm going to take a few verses out of this passage. Which I think is very encouraging. I want to keep track of my time as well. Psalm 104 verses 10 to 14. Verse 10 says, He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. I want you to follow the thought. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. Verse 11, They give drink to every piece of the field. The wild horses quench their thirst. By them shall the folds of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. Wow, that's, that's, so, that's so rhyming, right? He, wat he watered the hill from his chamber. When you speak about chamber, it's, it's almost like God is in heaven and his chamber, he's talking about an upper chamber, somebody who sits up and high, just looking down and taking good care of things. That's what the psalmist is saying here. He watered the hills from his chamber. The hurt is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. Verse 14 now, he caused, it, he caused it the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. Just like us, providing for mere man. That he may bring forth food out of the hurt. That's us, God and his creation, his marvelous creation. With all that was just said, with God's hands being on his creation, Jesus still said, we are still better than all of God's creation combined. Verse 29 says here, And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. You see, Solomon, David's son, was perhaps the wealthiest Jewish king that, that ever lived. But he wasn't as beautiful as the lilies, these plants that Jesus was alluding to. You see, Jesus' point wasn't trying to degrade Solomon. But his audience was most a Jew, will, will perhaps understand Solomon as being king. They, they would understand their, their background and they understand the background of what Christ is saying. Hence the comparison. I believe the comparison was to make it a clear emphasis that God cared for his creation. Let's, 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 let's look at verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the hoven, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, you have little faith. That's what question is, the question Christ wants to ask all of us this year. All of us, 26 of us, perhaps even more. Oh, you have little faith, including myself. To worry is an insult to God because God is saying, I, I take care of all of this. None of you are so concerned about creation as I am. I was the one who created. I was the one who, I am the one who is sustaining it. I am the one who is doing all of these things. So it, it, the question is fitting. Oh, you have little faith. And so the point that is the point that is is made clear here the question should be asked you see jesus is saying our faith in god is so small based on all the points he had made and so i don't know what is what you are facing or what will come our way this year but my friends our god is more than able to take good care of us if god so aimlessly provide for his creation then my friend he can more than take good care of all of us. Thirdly and finally, let's look at our Heavenly Father caring reminder. I think this passage kind of gave me the point as I was studying. Praise the Lord. Our Heavenly Father caring reminder. Deep down inside, do you think God cares deeply about you? I want to ask you that question for all of us to ponder individually. Do you think God cares deeply about you? That's a question for all of us to look right in the face and answer. Second question. Do you think he genuinely loves you? That's those two questions. If you want to defeat worry, ask yourself those two questions. Do you think God cares deeply about you? First question. Number two. Do you think he genuinely loves you? I'm talking, I'm talking as an individual because after in time we hear messages, we take it as a group. This was an individual message pointed, Jesus was pointed to, to, to a group of people. If you can answer yes to those two questions, then why worry? To worry is to sometimes question the love of God or the love he has for us. Think about that. 
for us to sit down and worry is to question the love God has for us. I think about what David is said. David said, think about it. A popular song that we have in time now, Psalm 23. Yes, we know it. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, David says. I shall not want. I shall not lack. But often time we forget this verse, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's powerful to defeat worry. To defeat our cares that keep us up all night or give us headaches. And so this is coming from a person who knows God deeply care about him. When something arises in our, in our life, in your life, what is your first response? A person who knows God care, cares will respond with great confidence that God will work it out. Think about that. Our loving, our loving God cares about us. Verse 31 says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or wearing what we shall be clothed. We look, at, we, look at, we look at Christ providing for his nature as it relates to giving food. We look at Christ quenching the animal thirst. And we look at his clothing. Solomon. All of these questions Christ asked was answered in this passage. So he's just asking some rhetorical questions. When I think of how much he took just to remind us throughout this short portion of scripture. Is nothing but love. And that's my, my third point. Our Heavenly Father care and reminder. Just a gentle reminder. Take no thought. Do not be anxious. Let's count how much time this, this thought comes up in this passage. You can write it down. Once in verse 25. Once in verse 31. And once in verse 34. Three times. This is a care and father and a gentle reminding us. That's why I'm not preaching so hard. I'm trying to use the softest of voice. Our oh, loving God cares. Think about what he said here. Verse 32. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth what he have need of. All of all of these things. He's saying Gentiles who were also those who were perhaps not Jews. Which will dip, depict who were unbelievers of a reason to be worrying because he's not the heavenly father. But of a truth, he still provides for them. God provides for countless of unbelievers. Sometimes they recognize it, sometimes they don't. But God still provides for them. Look what he said in the last part of verse 32. For your heavenly father knoweth that he have need of all these things. Isn't that put everything into a bracket or a parenthesis, as some people call it, close it, put an uh, put an end to worry. For your heavenly Father know it what he have need of all these things. Jesus is saying, God in heaven, take thought of our needs. And so I want to share a personal testimony. When I just move on my own, I was awaiting on a trek. A check for a fridge. Long story short, the check never came. And up to this day, it still hasn't. So I would be still be waiting. And to be honest, I was a bit feeling down most days. Because this no fridge thing, to be honest, was just throwing me off. Badly. And so I was worrying at times if I was forgetting by God. It's human. I'm a human. But deep down, I know God was going to do something. To work it out. Then all of a sudden. The sun came out. On my day. The bright day. I received a phone call from someone else. Di di different from the person. Who was going to give me a check for the fridge. I received a phone call from someone else. And said. Hey. I got a fridge for you. Verse 32. Clear on that. And this is my personal testimony. God take care of his children. And so what is your te testimony? What is your past testimony? Look, look back at verse 32. I can't overemphasize this verse. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that he have need of all these things. Isn't that God? We sovereign in heaven. Knoweth all our needs. For your heavenly Father knoweth that he have need of all these things. Perhaps you can write that verse down and put, Don't worry. You see, we have two options. We either believe God cares or worry. It's only two options. We either going to believe that deep down God cares about me or am I going to worry. And so how do we defeat worry? You see, God is not expect, expecting us to lie to ourselves about our, our situation that we have facing us or that may come upon us. Because I've been telling people think that God is saying, oh, um, nothing is happening and ignore it. God wanted to look on that situation they're facing and know deep down he's going to wreck it out. That's courage and that's faith. And so he wants us to look, look square it off in the high rock, by the way, and say, God will work it out. And so if you ask me, the key person behind worry is Satan, in of himself. He is the reason why we worry. And that's why Job responds when he lost his position. It's one of the greatest. I can never fully understand why a man could just come to one conclusion. Blessed be the name of the Lord, the Lord give it, and the Lord take that's not easy and Job wasn't worrying Job dealt with the situation because he knew who God is blessed be the name of the Lord the Lord give it and the Lord take it and so this is how we fight worry look at verse 33 a popular verse we all know Christ said here but seek ye first the kingdom of God if you and I want to deal with worry at face value this may not be the answer what we are looking for he's saying get up Carry on with life, proceed serving the Lord, and He will take care of it. Even Jesus Himself says, The man who honor the man who pleaseth God, my father will honor him. That's not my word in John chapter 12. Go and read it. He says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now you and I have a choice this year. Am I going to stay home or am I going to stay up all night like I am God? Psalm 121, there's a verse that says, The Lord needs a slumber, not sleep. Am I going to play God's role, staying up, not slumbering, not sleeping? It's a challenge for us to either recognize that I'm going to carry on my day knowing that God is going to work it out. Even when one side of me is saying, Ah, oh, this look hopeless, this look hopeless, this look hopeless, look hopeless. Another side going to say, God is going to work it out. Verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. In other words, he's saying, Don't worry about today and bring it into tomorrow. Tomorrow is not yet here. Think about today, deal with today. And someone once put it, worry only drain today's drain us as today's strength to face tomorrow. That's what it does. You spend today worrying about something that is gonna to happen tomorrow. You tomorrow you wake up, you're still weak, you can't face it. That's why Christ says, sufficient unto the day is evil thereof. And so I just want to close with a thought. And just on the, the 59th minute. <laughs> 2022. Write this down. 2022, trust the Lord with everything. Write it somewhere you can see it. 2022, trust the Lord with everything. Don't depend on ourselves. Health, believe it or not, I've been there. Health, the Lord will put you in a helpless situation where he has to bail you out. Don't be self-sufficient. Trust the Lord. Don't worry. And just be at peace. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Trust that your word would have accomplished it purpose I know it did for me so Lord strengthen us and cause us to walk uprightly before you Father we love you and we are asking that you guide us we see the variants we see the new waves we see all this thing coming about COVID every day we go to our bed there's almost a new variant a new this new that new all this type of stuff to make us fearful but Lord, as I said in this message, we have two options. 
is either we're going to trust you that you care, care for us or we're going to worry. But Lord, as we sang, we oftentimes sing, because Christ lives, we can face tomorrow. So give us peace in our hearts. Give us victory. And may we trust you with our lives, knowing that you know what's best. And Lord, when it's all be done and said, we will say, God is good. Lord, bless us. Give us strength for today, tomorrow, throughout this week. And re- re- reunite us at Bible study on Wednesday. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Michael.